Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hike here to Brown Mountain Dam and Angeles National Forest. Now, it's about a seven and a half mile hike round trip out and back. We're gonna start in Pasadena. And one of the things I love about this hike is that within 15 minutes, you feel like you're in a different world. As my six-year-old son says, it's like you've gone through a portal. You're uh, in the woods, you're on the Gabrieliano Trail, you're hiking up along the Arroyo Seco. Really beautiful, beautiful experience very quickly. Now, like I said, seven and a half miles to the dam, relatively flat, all of all the directions and maps, uh, parking information on hikingguy.com. If you're not familiar with the channel, that's the website. Go there before you come so you can get all the information to do the hike safely. And before we get into this, thank you for everyone who supported me over the years. I could not do it without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. And if you want to say thank you for the video, all you have to do is click that little thumbs up and uh, it is an easy way to do so. All right, guys, let me show you how to hike here. I'm also going to give you a little bonus. We'll come here and then I'll show you how to hike up and behind the dam so you can get a view from the back and see the water uh, behind the dam, which is all silted up. Just as an aside, I'll give you a little bit of context to why this is here. But uh, in the 1940s, they built this to do as a part of a larger flood control pro uh, program here in the forest. And if you've hiked around Angeles National Forest, you'll know. There's a bunch of these old dams here that uh, are just really not doing much of anything right now. After they built it, it, it silted up in the back as all the sediment that comes down with the water, you know, basically blocked the dam up. So it's just sort of an artifact. Uh, feels like you're hiking in the middle of the jungle to a, a relic of an ancient civilization here when you come to Brown Mountain Dam. But anyway, let me show you the hike and uh, hopefully you can get out and do it yourself. All right, so we're gonna start at the JPL parking lot. And you see that road right up there? That's the official trail. And when you come back, you can come back on that one. But instead, we're gonna to go to the end of the road here and take this single track, which is the parallel trail, a little bit nicer than the paved road. That's a little confusing. You see the trail off to the left there going down to the Royal Seco. But if you see here, there's a sign saying you actually are on a trail that runs parallel to the Gabrielino, which we'll be taking. And there are some little trails off to the right here, it goes up to the road, but you're just gonna stay straight on this and follow it up along the Arroyo Seco. And it's much nicer, you can see it's a nice single track, it's shaded, it's easy to follow here, and you will hear the Arroyo Seco as you hike up. But we're gonna take this up and then rejoin the main trail in a second. But here we're gonna cross over, and you can hop across these rocks here, but we're gonna cross over the Arroyo Seco. And instead of going up this trail on this side of the bridge, it's much easier just to go underneath the bridge and then make the hard left and join the trail proper up there. And the trail up there, even though it is paved, is the Gabrielino Trail. This was actually a paved road, I think until about 1938 when it all got washed out, but it used to go up to Camp Oak Wild, which is, uh, up a little bit past the dam. Here we're gonna go over the first of many bridges along the way. We're gonna get nice views down to the Arroyo Seco. It's amazing, you know, we've, we've only been hiking for a few minutes and it's a world away from where we were earlier. Now this split is important. You're gonna bear it to the left here. If you go right, you're gonna go up to some other pretty good trails and I'll do some guides that go to the right at some point in the near future, but we're gonna stay left here. Continue hiking up. Here's a spillway that was built by the Forest Service in 1949. The Forest Service built the dam, the Brown Mountain Dam, and they, you're going to see a lot of other uh, stone structures like this one that the Forest Service built along the way to help control the flooding, which obviously didn't work, but uh, it was what they thought was the right thing at the time. And when we cross this point, we're going to leave the wide trail, and generally we're going to be on a single track, and you can see the single track here. I mean, look at this, like I said, just a few minutes away from JPL and we are on a single track here with a babbling brook. Arroyo Seco actually means dry stream, but it is perennial. Um, it probably dries up sometimes when the drought is severe, but usually it's, it's flowing in there. So it's always nice, nice and cool. You can see all the shade here. And here we're entering Angeles National Forest. It's a very photogenic sign right there if you wanna grab a picture. And we're going to continue hiking up the Gabrielino. We're going to do our first big stream crossing. Now, if you can't cross right in front of you, you can always look up and down the stream. There's almost always a place where you can do some rock hopping across here, or you can just wear trail runners that vent easy like I am here and just plow right through the stream, keep your feet cool. But there are a few of these along the way. So 
get used to it. And look, look at this. It's just beautiful here. It just feels like you are a world away. Here's a little bench looking down onto the Arroyo Seco. There's probably a dozen, dozen-ish um, picnic benches and benches along the way to stop. And you can see there was a mountain biker there. There's a mule deer. We do share the trail with the animals and mountain bikers, but most of the mountain bikers here are used to hikers. It's a pretty um, established sharing place. And also you're gonna see a ton of ruins like this. Now these are old cabins. At one point there was about 180 cabins along the way here. Some were private, some were rentable. There was a place called Teddy's Outpost where you could get refreshments. And I'll talk a little bit about the history of the trail in the guide if you wanna dive a little bit deeper. About halfway through, roughly halfway, we're going to get to Gould Mesa Campground, which is right here. And you used to be able to drive down here from Angel's Crest Highway. I think that gate is closed now, so you can hike in here and camp if you'd like. And there's some nice places to go into the stream over on the right by that concrete uh, booth on the flood meter. And we're just going to go through here. They've planted some, some uh, shrubs and everything, which have grown to be huge. But we're going to go all the way to the end of Gould Mesa. Off to the left is the road up to Angeles National, uh, or Angeles Crest Highway, sorry. But we're gonna go straight on the Gabrielino. And there's a sign right here, which it doesn't, has mileages, it's, it's helpful, but the mileages are definitely off. You have more than a mile to go from here. Probably a little bit more like two, but look how beautiful this is as we go up through these canyons. There's a few of these smaller canyons. I think this is Agua Canyon off to the left there. But really, really, um, scenic and beautiful. Here's Nino Canyon. You can see in the distance there one of those flood controls, concrete barriers that they built. Again, this is all part of uh, the Forest Service work to help control flooding here. There was a big flood in 1938, which killed a bunch of people. And after that, they decided to try to control it a little bit, but obviously it didn't work. Another cute little bridge to go over and more stream crossings. And again, you can see this is concrete here. I've actually seen this whole concrete thing covered in the winter. And again, if it's if it's too too hairy for you, it was just turn around, but generally it's pretty tame. And look at this. Here we can the, the canyons are getting a little bit narrower. It really feels like you are in the heart of Angeles National Forest now, even though we're a few minutes in, maybe a mile or so in here. Really, really spectacular. Now this is important. Here the Paul Little picnic area. We're gonna stay to the left here, off to the right is the Gabrielino Trail. And I'll show you a little way to go up there and check out the uh, view from the top of the dam. But we're gonna go left and go up through Paul Little, the Paul Little camp or picnic site here. You can see there's some ruins up to the right there. There's a nice little picnic bench. And I'll talk about who Paul Little was and Gould and all those people in the guide if you wanna learn a little bit more. But we're gonna go straight through the picnic area. And the trail is still established here. It's a little bit rougher than maybe it was uh, before, but after a minute or two, you're gonna come up to the falls and it's a beautiful, beautiful spot here at the dam. Nice and shady, cool. And here is a spillway. Now this is not a functioning dam. It is filled with debris behind it. So it's kind of like a relic from a from bygone age, but this is the hike. And then you can just turn around and go back from here. But if you wanna go up, about a third of a mile up the Gabrielino, you're gonna get some nice views. You can see, we're just gonna go straight there to go back, but let's go ahead. I'll show you this little viewpoint up here. And it's gonna involve a little bit of climbing. It's the good news is not long. It is steep and it's a little bit tough. And you can see as we go up here, there's some switchbacks uh, to help ease the gradient. But again, it's only a third of a mile. And when we get up um, a little bit, we're gonna to start to see Brown Mountain in the distance, which is uh, what the Brown Mountain Dam is named after. It's that high peak in the distance there. And as we climb up about a quarter of a mile in, you're gonna you see the Angeles Crest Highway up in the distance, right over there. And once you can see that, look down. And if you look down there, you can see the dam from the top and there's the waterfall and the dam beautiful, more of a postcard type shot from up here. And if you continue for another minute or two, there's another viewpoint where you're gonna get some great views into Angeles National Forest of Hoyt Mountain and Josephine Peak, both of which are uh, hikeable. And those guides are on Hiking Guy. And uh, stick around, I'll show you what this looks like on a map.
All right, so here we are on the hike. Just one thing to note, this difference in color is just different satellite photography here, but you can see we're starting out in the suburbs of Pasadena, Altadena, and then heading up the Arroyo Seco into sort of the heart here of Angeles National Forest. Now, earlier I mentioned there was a, another road we could take. We took this little parallel trail along um, the shaded Arroyo Seco here, but if you wanted to, the official way to do it is to go up that road, and that's the road I showed you, and then turn here and run parallel. But you can see this is nowhere near as pretty as this little stretch. Now from here, it's all pretty straightforward. We're gonna be following the river the whole way up, the Arroyo Seco. If you're not along the Arroyo Seco at some point, you're in the wrong place, and you can see how lush it is with all these trees as we follow it up here. Here we get to Gould Mesa. This was that campground. Here's that road up to the Angeles Crest Highway, which is right up here, running a little bit parallel as we get closer up here. And then from Gould, we're gonna go up. This is Agua Canyon, uh, Nino Canyon. This is where I showed you that dam. And then you can see where the photography changes. We're continuing up here, running parallel to the Angeles Crest Highway. And then we get up to the Paul Little picnic area. This is where the sign was. And from Paul Little, we just go through, and then here is the dam. Now, this is the extension, and I put this in the GPX file. We can climb over here and get some nice views of the dam from up top there. That's where it looks down. And if we continue a little bit farther, we can look up and see Hoyt Peak and Josephine Peak over here. And if you wanted to hike even more on this, you can definitely follow the Gabrielino Trail up. It goes all the way up along the Arroyo Seco to um, Switzer's, uh, Switzer's Falls and Switzer's Camp, way, way up here. And you can take it all the way to Chantry Flat, um, sort of on the other side of Angeles National Forest, or one of the other sides of Angeles National Forest, on the other side of this uh, mountain range here. But uh, anyway, I have a guide to that on Hiking Guy as well, if you want to check that out for the Gabrielino. Part of it is closed right now in May of 2022 because of the Bobcat fire, but hopefully that will be opening up at some point and we'll be able to hike the whole way of the Gabrielino again. But anyway, guys, that's Brown Mountain Dam. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just leave them uh, in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. All right, see you out there. Thank you.